He's, he's saying, give them hell. And he says, I need you to find me 80 Jewish families. And then you had uh, Omar Suleiman stepping up and telling him to go to hell. So that we're willing to volunteer to move to Jerusalem so we can reestablish a Jewish presence in this city. To see someone like Omar Suleiman. That's the stuff that's left out of your history book. When Palestine is free, people like him are going to be ashamed that they did this. This guy right here, this guy's trying to build a Dawah center in our country. I'm not talking to you right now, you're a cello. You're trying to build a Dawah center here. Islam is violating my nature. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. This is exactly why we need the Dean Center, because we have over 300 million Americans who know nothing about Islam, like this guy. Hey, you want to have a talk? You, yeah, this guy's guys trying to build a Dawah center in our country. And Surah 9 is the most violent chapter of the Quran. The Dean Center will be a source of light, a mega Dawah center, an educational center, helping our brothers and sisters in humanity truly understand Islam and Muslims. And brothers and sisters, remember the great rewards of just guiding one person in humanity to the truth is better than everything in this dunya. So get in on all the rewards and blessings. Click the link below, donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. Assalamu alaikum, greens of peace. Welcome to the Dishon. I'm your dear host. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. Woke up this morning and you saw that there was a state of war. And we wanted to go ahead and shed some... Um, light on more of the context of the relationship between Islam, Muslims, and Jews. And with me here is Sheikh Yusuf. How are you? Allahumma lakal hamzakallah khair yourself? Good, good. Alhamdulillah. It's good to see you. You too? You, you as well. Uh, we had um, very interesting, uh, some very uh, interesting uh, developments. It's, and again, disclaimer, it's very sad anytime, you know, innocent life is taken. Um, human life is precious life. And uh, We'd like nothing more than to have peace with uh, all of our neighbors. Uh, what do you think about that? Of course, that, that's that's an Islamic concept. Um, uh, community cohesion, uh, living together, coexisting, living side by side, helping one another uh, in that which we uh, uh, have common ground on is, is definitely, these are all Islamic uh, values that we uphold and, and, and live for and stand by. In the midst of all this, you have Jordan Peterson, Peterson who the last time when we met, Actually, uh, we were actually praising Jordan Peterson, you remember? And now he actually uh, tweeted, and we'll go through some of these tweets. Uh, he's, he's saying, give him hell. He's talking, uh, enough is enough. Now we're not going to get into uh, some details, specifics here, but just generally, uh, some generals here that we'll be discussing. So, and then you had uh, Omar Suleiman stepping up and telling him to go to hell. So it was... Uh, I didn't know he had him in it. He is nice to see. I'm I'm quite Omar. surprised. Uh, and yeah, it's it's. Um, I mean, let me get, I, through, let me get through these. Sure, Hold on. So sure. we got our brother uh, uh, Sheikh Omar Suleiman stepping up and telling Jordan Peterson to go to hell. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, and then you have, uh, and these are all under the tweets under there. Daniel steps in. He says, "How does it feel?" He's talking to Jordan Peterson to be a cheap prostitute. He's talking to um, to Jordan Peterson. Uh, you have Samir Khan, owned. She says, own. You have Amir Kolan. I had him recently on the program. He's, he's telling Jordan Peterson. And, and you can see a lot of uh, Muslims actually respected Jordan Peterson, right? And, and you were one of for the right we, For the right reasons. Yeah. yeah. And then he says, uh, when I watch uh, Jordan Peterson being played on Daily Wire by Little Ben and Netanyahu, I thought he would be intelligent enough to figure out that he was being played. But I guess the Benzos, the money, has done their damage. And you got Robert Carter saying, yeah, that's it, Peterson. Earn your new paycheck, you little hoe. He's called, wow. Oh, boy. Ooh, so... Um, not, that hasn't been taken down? Uh, I don't... I that's don't, allowed on Twitter? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, your thoughts when you uh, when you see this. Obviously, there's a it's a declaration of war right now. There's a, With Israel, we've seen operations and whatnot, but now it's... Uh, I guess it's it's you know this war. this 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 nonsense this this oppression that's been happening to the Palestinian people for decades now if if not more um is is something that obviously is is and it's very sad to see that the American people have not woken up to this yet alhamdulillah by the by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the means of social media uh YouTube and these you know uh, s uh smartphones and so on and so forth I think a lot of people have somewhat 
more access, definitely more than, than before, because before you'd only get the standard narrative that you're going to get from that part of the world regarding as to what's happening between the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, as they'd like to put it, when in reality, it's it's not the Israeli-Palestinian uh, 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 Israeli, uh, conflict. It's the oppression, the injustice, the ongoing injustices that keep perpetuating against the Palestinian people. I mean, this is literally an apart hide that's existing and trans transpired in the 21st century in 2023 this is happening where people are not allowed right to e e even access to basic necessities and the average american i think is simply not aware as to what is going on and what has been taking place in that part of the world a lot of people think oh it's just these crazy nutcase palestinians who have absolutely nothing to do than to roam the streets and to cause havoc and to cause damage right to the to to, to the jewish people that that's not what's happening over there i want to get your reaction to this and this is what uh probably got a lot of uh, a lot of people upset with jordan peterson if he's trying to really be a man of peace or someone promoting peace it doesn't seem good, like it why wouldn't he try to you know this is self-evident it's something that you 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 look at i've had uh, miko pillid He's uh, written a book, The General Son. I don't know if you got a chance to see that. He's an Israeli Jew. He's someone who's putting his neck on the line, coming out and speaking against these injustices that are happening. When Palestine is free, people like him are going to be ashamed that they did this. He's going to be embarrassed that he did this. You know, there's a famous rabbi who lived in Jerusalem. He was one of the uh, anti-Zionist uh, rabbis, li like uh, Rabbi Weiss that you interviewed. And he was interviewed by a student of his. And the student said to him, if... Um, uh, if you were in charge today, what would be the first thing that you would do? And this rabbi said, the first thing I would do is I would ask the Palestinians to come back. And the student says, why? What are you talking about? They're terrorists. They want to kill us. And the rabbi, his name is Rabbi Amram, Rabbi Amram Blau. And the rabbi said, who told you that? Who told you that the Arabs were going to kill us? We had great relations with the Muslims and the Arabs back in the day. You know, his family lived in Hebron and his half family lived in Jerusalem that always had, you know, Jewish minorities. He said, we had great relations. We shared the same values. We shared the similar culture. You know, we all treat each other with respect. It was only, only when the Zionists came, the beginning of the 20th century, that the terrorism began, that the violence began. And it was initiated not by the Palestinians, not by the Arabs and the Muslims, but by the Zionists. You know, open air prism, basic, you know, on one side, you got people full running water, electricity all day. Imagine you now you're on the other side and only for a fraction of the time, maybe two, five percent of the time you get that running water, you get dirty water, you get electricity 24 seven on one side across the street on the other side of the fence. You got it for only, you know, a fraction of the time, maybe one, one few hours a week or something. Right. So basic, you know human life is not being kids are being um uh, thrown in jail you got uh, babies being killed you got this all is daily justice. this daily. is daily and, and these are people credible people you got rabbi weiss i've had him on the show that palestine has the right to be free and that is unacceptable to occupy palestine it is unacceptable what these zionists are doing so it's not the thing is it's not like a jew muslim thing and, I, and I, that's why I wanted you to react to this. This next one, this is a university professor. It's one thing us talking about this history, but we're going to show here because that's the greater scheme of things. If Jordan Peters sees this, he can he could actually do some good. He can call people to, 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 to really, you know, come into the past, present, and try to uh, do some good with that platform instead of, you know, what's he saying? Just go, go, go get them indiscriminate. We know what happens when then you have indiscriminate right. killing, bombing sure. of civilians sure. who can't get out. Like, sure. you know, sure. I want to make this very clear. Our stance is the Prophet Muhammad stance that, you know, I'm putting this hadith on the wall. Do not kill any, uh, any child, woman, elderly, you know, uh, the practice of treachery, you know, operating tree. This is like the commandments of war. This is fr pretty straight, you know, killing one innocent child, non-combatants as you kill the world. So this is our stand. This is, you know, we love nothing more peace, but just giving the, the greater context of things. Here, let's get into this video and get your, um, your take on this so people can see the history of how Muslims have really been towards Jewish people. This is not a Muslim Jewish thing. This is, uh, this is when sure. you have the Zionists who are taking charge that good That's good, the good differentiation, differentiation there. yeah okay so the context here we'll just play a clip is now muslims came and conquered jerusalem omar uh head of state he conquers now and they had done you know all sorts of 
you know, uh, treachery and whatnot. Now his chance is to take revenge, right? But he didn't. And he did the same thing Prophet Muhammad did when he came in 10,000 strong to Mecca and he ended up showing mercy, spread the peace, spread the food. He's following the example of Prophet Muhammad. After that, Salahuddin Ayyubi would do the same thing. We're making it short and concise. People can go check this history out. You don't get to learn this using in school. This professor's teaching this history in school. Now he's getting to the point where Omar radiallahu anh, he's saying like, where are the Jews? And watch what happens next. At that point, the Caliph says, I want to see the Temple Mount. And Sophronius goes, why? And the Caliph goes, because it's holy. It's holy to everybody. It's holy to Christians, it's holy to Jews, it's holy to Muslims. And Sophronius goes, nah, we haven't been treating it as holy to anybody. And Omar ibn al-Khattab goes, what do you mean? And so Sophronius says, so after we tore down the second temple of Solomon, when we conquered Palestine, we turned the Temple Mount into a garbage dump to punish the Jews. And, so, and the Caliph goes, what do you mean? And Sophronius goes, yeah, we've been, there's like 500 years of refuse on that thing. It's just a garbage dump. And he goes, show me. They walk up to the Temple Mount and the Caliph can't believe what he's looking at. He falls on his knees and he begins clearing the garbage by his hands. His army sees their leader on his knees clearing garbage and they run up and they start clearing the garbage themselves. And they clear the garbage off the Temple Mount. The Caliph goes, okay. I want to meet some of the Jews living in Jerusalem. And Sophronius goes, there are no Jews in Jerusalem. And the Caliph goes, what do you mean there's no Jews in Jerusalem? The city is holy to the Jews. How could there be no Jews? And he says, well, us Christians, we pretty much murder them every chance we get. We really hate Jews. In fact, in the war we just did against the Persians, the Jews sided with the Persians, and so we murdered 20,000 Jews in Jerusalem and completely purged the city of its remaining Jewish population. And Omar ibn al-Khattab goes, no, this is wrong, you can't do this. And so he turns to a convert to Islam, a Jewish convert to Islam, and he says, I need you to find me 80 Jewish families that were willing to volunteer to move to Jerusalem so we can reestablish a Jewish presence in this city. And that's how the Muslims conquered Jerusalem. And that's the stuff that's left out of your history book. Isn't that crazy? Because isn't that an amazing story? That's the stuff that's, that's left, left out, out of your history book. If we would have just talked about it's one thing, but now you yeah. have an academic, this is a professor. We know this history. Right. Uh, but this is the stuff they're leaving out of the history books. Intentionally. Uh, so why would, if, yeah. if Muslims hated Jews, why would they want to, Omar, he's repopulated. There's no, no, I mean, do they understand that this is like no right. Jews in Jerusalem? They're gone. They've been being killed. You know, the Christians are killing them. And he's like, where are they at? He's showing, looking for the Temple Mount. It's covered, what, with garbage, it's how many hundreds horrible. of right. years? Right. He restores it. And then he basically gets 80 families to repopulate right. Jerusalem. Yeah. Look at the respect he's even showing to you. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. So are they your enemy because of that? No, I, I think we have, as you mentioned earlier, I think there's the, 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 the benchmarker. I think the differentiating factor is, are we talking about Zionists? Zionists here, or, or are we speaking of, of Jews and Christians? I think there's, there's, there's a big, I mean, you have many Jews. Jewish, right? Just so I'm not accused of being an anti-Semite, because today, if you criticize, just by criticizing, uh, uh, not Judaism, but, you know, Zionism and what the state of Israel is doing, you're immediately deemed an anti-Semite, right? It's as if there's absolutely no room for legitimate criticism. That's just but a, you know, Pollyannish, that's just Pollyannish daydreaming. You cannot criticize uh, uh, what they're doing, Right. There's no room for that. Absolutely. Zip, zilch, nada, not a scintilla. Right. Unfortunately. And this is what makes, you know, things, you know, it exacerbates the matter even more. So the problem is not necessarily having an issue with them oh, because they're Christian or because they're Jews. We have many, 
even during the, 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 the even during the, the high time or the golden age of Islam, you had it's not like it's a fantasy. Community cohesion and coexistence, it's not a fantasy. People talk about it like it's a fantasy as though it never existed in history before. You had Muslims living next to Christians, Christians living next to Jews, Jews living next to Muslims. And certain Jews actually occupied certain, you know, certain positions even in the Islamic government, right? Um, so it's not our, our beef here is not necessarily with, oh, because they're Jews or because they're Christians. I mean, we as Muslims, we're, we're obviously allowed to marry Jewish women. Men are allowed to marry Christian women. So if the beef was necessarily with oh, Jews or Christians, then Muslim men would not be allowed to marry Jewish women or Christian women. But the beef is not necessarily there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you and this, you know, you make, you make me think of something else here. I think we, as, as Americans, I think we really have to move beyond this idea. I mean, it, at first, I think it was we can we could get away with being gullible, naive, unaware, and ignorant of what has taken place in the world. But I think today, with the proliferation of social media, uh, smartphones, and the access to the internet, I don't think we can get away with the idea that oh, the world has a problem with us simply because of our freedoms and liberties. Mm -hmm. This is utter. This is just asinine. I think the world has a when you. When you commit atrocity after atrocity to a people, when we have a bad track record here, although I'm kind of shifting shifting gears here a bit, uh, we're talking about Zionists, now I'm talking about what we're, as Americans here, what we're doing across the globe or in, in the world, we have to kind of look at ourselves and see, well, have we been good stewards around the world? Yes, we're helping the poor, we're helping the needy, but I think we, we've done, a, we've, we've been the cause of a lot of carnage in the world. And I think it is time for us as Americans to own up and to speak to that and acknowledge perhaps maybe why some parts of the world have a problem with us. And it's not because of our, you know, liberties or freedoms. Maybe it's because what we've done to them over the decades. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what do you uh, what do you think is the reasoning for um, you have someone like uh, Omar Suleiman who's telling Jordan Peterson to go to hell? He's got him more. He's pretty worked up. I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, why, why, why would he? I mean, what would? There's. What's the context now? You would think like. To I'm. Really he, I am elated to see someone like Omar Suleiman. Kabura fi aini sarahat na rajul. I'm. Bismillah, ma sha Allah. Yani. Good move. Good move. Um, that we're moving beyond the whole compassionate talk about love and mercy. I think. That's good. We got a lot this of is, compassion, and love, and so we follow the mercy, the prophet of mercy. You know? <laughs> but we don't, again, we don't want to <laughs> overdo it. I got you. Where we become the pushovers. Yes. Yeah. So kudos to uh, to Dr. Omar Suleiman. Yes, absolutely. And then you have over here, um, there are pretty much a lot of people are saying the same thing. So if Jordan Peterson is sincere and he's reading some of these comments and he's like, there's got to be something there. Like, you know, everyone like, from the, the comments here are pretty much saying that he's all bought. He's, yeah. he's pretty much bought. He's so, he pretty much sold his soul. You know what, what what's, I, and I don't know where to begin when it comes with Jordan Peterson, because when he, when he, I, the man is a mountain of knowledge, a very knowledgeable mm -hmm. person and a very smart and intelligent person. No one can take that away from him and this is not me saying hey let's bring him to our next conference please this is not what i'm getting at here but i've noticed when he starts speaking about issues out of his domain he really starts to speak nonsense whomsoever speaks outside of his own field of expertise will come with very wild ludicrous and bizarre ideas mm -hmm. and unfortunately this is what's happening with him so a bit of humility on his part, yani sarahat, and it's it's a disgrace for a man uh, of that stature and that man of of of, of popularity really uh, to to utter nonsense like this. Uh, Rabbi, Wise, it's disappointing. You had you had uh, I've had um, Rabbi Shapiro on the program and other Jews. The incompatibility between Judaism and Zionism. Many Jews believe wrongly that Zionism is either part of Judaism or is compatible with Judaism or is even the main part of Judaism. All of those are actually false. Zionism was created to negate Judaism. Zionism was created to replace Judaism. The differences between Zionism and Judaism are vast. They are vast and profound. The propaganda that the Zionists have churned out for the past hundred years have confused and conflated Zionism and Judaism such that when the average person walks down the street, 
He thinks that the state of Israel is the Jewish state. He thinks that Zionism is Judaism, and he doesn't know the difference. This group of Jews here are students of the students of the late Satmar Rabbi, Rabbi Yoel Teitelbaum, who was the greatest disseminator of the clarity regarding the difference between Judaism and Zionism. Miko's a friend of mine, I consider he's, um, he's someone out there who's speaking the truth, and I would really recommend uh, people who want to know the truth to go look into some of their work. I mean, Israelis really believe that the IDF is the most moral army in the world. The Israeli media is playing this shameful role of collaborating with the occupation. The government, the army, the secret services don't want you to tell. And the consumers, the readers and the viewers don't want to hear and don't want to know. One day someone will ask what happened here? How come that this society is living in this denial? I try to whistle in the darkness, but I don't think it has any influence. On the contrary, you see that Everything goes to the opposite direction. So what's the point? I remember I asked my father the same question one day. He said, well, I don't want them to be able to say that they didn't know. Yeah. yeah. They cannot say they didn't know. I mean, these are... Norman, Norman Finkelstein? No, okay. I mean, what a man. Yeah. Do, do you know who that is? Yes, yes. Yeah, may Allah guide him to Islam. He I mean, is vocal. He, he does not... He does not. He does not yeah. know the art of sugarcoating. Mm -hmm. May Allah but, guide him to Islam, right? But I mean, no, I mean... Imagine if we're pro if we're we're chanting, you know, if you if you see something like this, this is not what God conscious people, people who are, you know, uh, people, no Muslims should be chanting death to Moses or you know even in Islam you have don't curse their gods. What does Allah say? Or yeah, ولا تسب الذين دعونا من دون الله فيسب الله عدوا بغير علم. Show this quick real, real quick. <laughs> What do you think when you see that? I mean, again, I don't, I don't it's have. Just, it's I, I, diabolical. I, it it really, really comes off as being satanic and diabolical. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not enough that you're oppressing the people, but you're finding joy and taking pleasure in doing so. We don't have our way of life. Uh, submission to the Creator, not the creation, doesn't teach us to hate a certain group of people because they're a certain group of people. You have many Jews who actually even accept Islam, live peacefully even if they don't accept. You know, there isn't their life and property, everything they have. They, they have certain rights in Islam that now cannot even be transgressed. You know, their right to worship, their right to, you know, uh, live their lives according even to the church, Even the churches, even, even the synagogues. Church. We as Muslims do not have the right to desecrate those areas mm -hmm. or to vilify those those places because Islam does consider, although... Although they're not, it's not a masjid, but Islam still consider those. We still consider those places to be sacred places. They are not to be touched. Yeah. When I had Rabbi Weisson and Miko Billad and many of them confirmed this, that even be before the Zionist, Zionists is more people who are atheists. They really don't even have much. Uh, sure, this, sure. Is, this is more of an atheist. You know, more in line with the Bolsheviks right. and people like this. But, uh, I mean, you have good people like this, like uh, Miko Pillard and the, and the rabbi, and they come out and they talk about even the chief rabbi at the time because people don't know that the, the Christians are also being oppressed there. Even Christians are I being I was going to mention that. Yes, they are. So, so what ha what's happening there is that before this occupation, you had Christians, Muslims, and Jews. They were all together living in peace. Before they, 1948, uh -huh. they were living. They were living. They, there were Jews there. There were Muslims and Christians. They're all living side by side. And they got along just fine. Yeah. They watched each other's kids. Yeah. Right. There was like there was actual peace. Yeah. And then the chief rabbi at that time was saying, no, this is not. Do not do this. They were like, I remember t doing this interview with the rabbi. Right. And uh, Rabbi Shapiro, he holds one of the uh, the greatest um, conferences, biggest conferences. They have like I don't know thousands, thousands of rabbis coming mm -hmm. together right. who are really against this whole uh, sure. this whole movement. That's yeah. that's you know causing this chaos. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the Quran in Surah Ali Imran, just just so we're not painting everybody with the same brush. I think yeah. think these two verses are very relevant. Uh, in one verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa min ahli al-kitabi man in ta'manhu bi qimu tarin yu'adhihi ilayk." Uh, so in of here, it's of the people of the book that if you entrust them with a huge amount of wealth, they will readily and happily give it right back to you. 
But some of them, if you entrust them with just one dinar, meaning a very medical meager amount, mm -hmm. they will not give it back to you until you stay running after them. Mm -hmm. Right? So clearly here, the Quran is not painting the Jews or the Christians with one brush. They're saying that they're not the same. In Surah Ali Imran, the same surah, Allah says, Laysu sawa'a min ahlil kitab. They're yeah. not the same of the people of the book. Yeah. Right? And yeah. Um, again, we, we don't approve, you know, it's very clear. Like I opened up with the hadith, even the Quran, you know, um, human life is precious life. Uh, we talked about this uh, before. Um, many of the, um, you know, the many of the, the things that Islam espouses and whatnot. Um, let me get into this next next uh, tweet here. This is from our brother Zishan, Smile the Jannah. He says the U.S. government doesn't have money to solve the plight of its citizens, but it has plenty of to support the occupation and oppress, or, oppression of Palestinians. Then we wonder why it's uh, so messed up there. Here are 8 billion reasons why. And now you just have here U.S. President Biden approves emergency military aid package to Israel, $8 billion. And we have people laying on the ground outside of hotels in the middle of downtown in tents in many populated cities, metropolis cities, big cities here in America. You're, you're telling me our own citizens here, and I speak here as an American, you're telling me that they are not more deserving of that money? You have people laying in tents, people after the pandemic, losing their homes, families being destroyed because of the, the, the economic stress that it took, that, 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 you know, took a toll on them. But we have money just to send off left and right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is going to anger a lot of people. We, the taxpayers. Uh, yeah, and I, I wanted to really push that point home that, again, this is not something that is where Muslims are just hate Jews. You know, you have this professor here. Why would, just for the thinking person, sure, why sure. would this professor here... Uh, Jewish professor David uh, Warrenstein. I've brought this up many times because it's so profound and powerful. Right, right. He, in his uh, JC uh, essay in the Jewish Chronicle, he said, Islam saved the jury. How's Islam going to save you if it hates you? You yeah. know, if it's uh, Muslims are called to um, terrorize, to hate you, to, you know, uh, when, when Muslims are saving you. And this is in essence to, um, you know, the time when they were being persecuted, Albania, Turkey. I, Bosnia, you have they were running and being from fled for persecution in France. The Muslims mm -hmm. at that time were putting their lives on the life to save the Jewish people. Yeah. They were yeah. forging documents for them. Uh, you know about that. What are your right. thoughts on that? Well, I, uh, that that's because uh, Islam teaches us to stand up for our principles, right? Um, another verse that comes to mind is where Allah says, "Lay in hakum Allahu anil ladina lam yuqatilukum fi din." وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّهُمْ وَتُقْسِيطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِيطِينَ Allah, basically in the Quran says that Allah does not uh, uh, ref keep you from being good to those who did not fight you for your religion or drive you out of your homes. These are the two conditions, right? So being good, extending the help in hand, right? Uh, 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 being just towards them. This is, this is a religious obligation. Even to the atheist. You might have some atheists who are watching this. Like when, when you see someone who is in need of help, although the, even if they're an atheist, they don't believe in God, right? I, as a Muslim, it is still my duty and obligation to help, help them if I can give and extend the help in hand. Islam clearly condemns, I've, just, I've repeated it so many times, the sure. killing of noncombatants, uh, innocent uh, men, women, and children. This is very clear. What could Jordan Peterson, if you were going to have a message for him, he ob obviously had... Maybe still has some uh, who are not aware, but now more people are going to be aware of um, uh, his stance and you know towards this whole thing. What do you think he could be doing differently? If you, because you admire some of his work, I did also, but uh, the direction he's going, and many people are saying he's just bought now and he's really not on the on the line of truth. What 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 would you <coughs> say he can he can do differently, Jordan Peterson, if he if he listens to this? When Palestine is free, people like him are going to be ashamed that they did this. He's going to be embarrassed that he did this. I think he's being extremely biased. I think he's being he's looking at things from from one side. And of course, there, there are always two sides to 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 a story. But I, I don't think he's had enough time to kind of dig thoroughly and seriously and diligently as to what in the world is taking place on the other side mm -hmm. and him being who he is 
owes it to himself expediently and urgently to take a look as to what's happening on the other side. And then you feel free and you're welcome to tweet whatever it is that you feel. But don't base your judgment off of this one skewed, one-sided, skewed nonsense. Mm-hmm. Do your research. Study the same way you've done <laughs> your studies for everything else. Diligently and thoroughly scrutinize what is taking place in that part of the world before tweeting this. And I don't think anybody with a heart, anybody who um, is a well-wisher for anybody to look at uh, the oppression that's happening. I mean, just people being treated worse than animals. I mean, yeah. it's an up, it's 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 a people, present day apartheid. Uh, people get upset if you mistreated an animal, yeah. let alone a human being. You know yeah. what I mean? Where's so, human right? Where's human rights uh, watch? Where where are they in all this? Yeah, uh, many have uh, many have condemned, but the you know the global elites and people, the movers and shakers, they're silent. Uh, to these oppressions that are happening. And um, I think good-hearted Americans and others out there, I often recommended the, the book of Miko Pillage, some of his, um, his because he's an Israeli Jew. Right. His father was the original signer of the Declaration of uh, Independence for Israel. Sure. Right? So he is really somebody who's putting his neck on the line and look at some of these other people like Rabbi, Rabbi Weiss, Shapiro, and look what they're saying. Sure. They're Jewish. Sure. One is Jewish or Israeli and see the other side of the coin. Why are they coming out and speaking on behalf of the oppressed? Because they're oppressed and they're people who uh, don't like to see oppression. So with that said, um, thank you very much for helping us uh, cover this briefly. And uh, we, we, um, we wish uh, that truth and peace and all the good prevails because we really want to live in peace with our neighbors and the rest of mankind. We uh, Indeed we do. Yeah. Yes. And we started with peace. We'll end with peace. Peace be with you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, don't forget uh, to go ahead and if you'd like to see more, learn more about uh, Islam and Muslims, I'll give you a free copy of the Quran. Visit thedeanshow.com. Get your free copy there and don't miss any future episodes by subscribing. Hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time. Until then, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. I have no doubt that Bismillahi Ta'ala it will be a successful project inshallah. I've had the blessing of knowing Brother Eddie since he started the Dean Show and he's one of the most sincere and most dedicated people to the da'wah that I have ever met. So please do support the Dean Center. Jazakumullahu khairan.